Morning, everybody. It's kind of amazing the prayer Albert prayed this morning. We've been talking on uh, receiving from God and how many Christians seem to have trouble in this area. I've had trouble. Watch other Christians we strain to hear from the Lord, strain to receive. And uh, I've just been trying to take examples from God's Word so that we can learn how to receive because I want to receive from God, don't y'all? I mean, God's a miracle working God and I want the miracles and I want the blessings and the promises are mine. And I'm, I'm going to have them. I just, I am. I've had them in the past. I'm having them today, and I'm going to have them tomorrow. Amen? Amen. So I want to show you something. If you would, turn to the book of Mark in chapter 2. I like to look at the stories and the accounts, how people receive from God in His Word. But I think, uh, like the prayer that Albert prayed there a while ago, it's really going come to come into play on what I'm going to show you. But I want to start with this first story because I thought this is an amazing uh, it's an amazing recording of what happened. Mark chapter 2. Y'all there? Alright, <laughs> I'll give you a minute. Mark chapter 2. I'm going to start in verse 1. It says, and again speaking... Jesus, he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. And straightway many were gathered together, together inasmuch that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. And they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. Here is Jesus preaching the word. His, his fame is spreading and that people are realizing he is a miracle working man. I looked at this account right here and it says he preached the word and there was a multitude. There was an anointing on his word. Amen. The Word was productive. The Word in our life is still productive today. It is. It's, it's us receiving is the problem. It says, They come to Him bringing one sick of the palsy which was born of four. Right here really spoke to me on the compassion that these, these brothers had for their sick one. Come on. They packed Him. He's sick of the palsy. And they packed their brother to this event where Jesus was teaching. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. <laughs> How far will you go to receive a healing? What's it worth to you to do? I've never seen it. I hope to one day, but they claim in Africa that they'll have these big events like Reinhard Bunky and these different ones. Uh, Daniel Kalinda will go over there into the remote places of Africa and they'll hear that a man of God is there preaching the Word. And they will grab the sick and drag them on cots. This day, 2014, y'all, they'll pack their sick to get to this man of God. And they're having miraculous healings. Is God's Word more powerful over there? No. You know what the difference is while I'm on this? It is. We are so cluttered. My mind, my mind, I'll use me as that. My mind is so cluttered of what I have been told is truth here. What is knowledge by man's wisdom is that this one don't have a cure and this one, you know, they're just not miracles. And you have all these things that I have to process and weed out in my mind so I can figure out what is truly truth. Over there in the remote regions, they hear that Jesus gives eternal life if you accept Him. They hear that Jesus will deliver you from the bondages that they carry of witchcraft and the different pagan religions over here, that He'll deliver you. They hear that Jesus healed back then and He heals today if you'll receive Him. And you know what happens over there? They come with childlike faith and they get what they go for. So what's the difference? It's their heart. I'm going to go into this if I can get there with where we're going, but I want you to, I want you to chew on this. I'm speaking this now. We've prayed that the Holy Spirit 
He's doing His work here this morning. Amen? Because He can change your heart. And right now, listen, right now you can have your miracle. It's not depending on God. It's depending on you. And I'm telling you a truth, ladies and gentlemen. It's depending on you. God's power is ever flowing, ever there, ever, ever, and always ready to do what it is sent forth to do. It shall not come back void. The problem's right here. This causes me problems. Me. How I receive what God says. It can be absolute truth to you and no one can sway you and you're going to have it. Or you can be battling with the doubts and the what ifs and I feel this and that and that and you get troubles. So I'm telling you the truth. It's the truth. God is not more powerful in Africa than He is right here in Benton, Kentucky. Amen? Okay. Let me get back to where I was. They let down the... The, the bed were in the sick of the palsy lay. Look at verse 5. When Jesus saw their what? Their faith. He said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. They're thinking. They're thinking. Why does this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them. Now look what happened here. They're thinking because they're always against Jesus. Amen? I say amen, church. They're always wanting to tell you you can't count on this or believe in this. And I know they say that about Jesus, but you know how it truly is. No, we know the word of God. Jesus knew in their hearts. He knew he was using a gift of the spirit that's still available today. We've taught on that. You can find that in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. It's nine spiritual gifts that God gives to all men, severally as He wills. Amen? Amen? Jesus perceived because God the Father told Him, they're doubting you, son. God's still doing it today. He knew here that these men were doubting Him. Who is this man? Speaking blasphemies. No man can forgive sins but God only. Now I want to tell you something that I noted here that was amazing, but I want to go on just a little bit. Noticed, he said, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. He was sick of a palsy. Hmm. I thought this was interesting. And immediately when Jesus perceived in the spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, Why reason you these things in your hearts? Whether is it easier to say to the sick of the palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee? Or to say, Arise, and take up thy bed and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth Amen. to forgive sins, he saith to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, and take up thy bed, and go thy way into thine house. This is amazing. You know what this teaches me, church? Let me tell you what it teaches me. That the forgiveness of sins and the healing is all one. Is somebody getting this? Because I got it. They want to tell you today that, well, Jesus can save you. But now he's not a healer today. This is lies. You see right here in the word I just read to you, thy sons, son, thy sins have been forgiven thee. What? What, I drag this sick guy this far? I break down the roof and the four of us lure our buddy into Jesus and you tell him his sins are forgiven? We want healing. It's the same. It's called the atonement. It's the redemptive plan. The Greek word for saved is sozo, amen? Amen? amen. You can trust me on this, it is. It really is. It means your sins are forgiven. It means you're healed. It means you're delivered. It means you are what He says you are in Him. That's what it means. Now, I can believe this and take this as absolute faith and you cannot buck me or I can, I can sit here and say, man, I hope so. I sure hope so. I've talked to Christians. I have. I say, man, it's going to be awesome when we get to heaven, ain't it? Yeah, boy, I hope I make it. What? You hope you make it? There's one way there. One. What's His name, church? Jesus. What must I do to be saved? Believe in Him. Believe that He died and rose again where? In here. 
Here's the trouble, ladies and gentlemen. I am giving you this on a golden platter. If you accept it in just your mind, the, the battlefield is your mind. The devil plays with me all the time in my mind. And I'm sure he does y'all, don't he? You know, today I'm, I'm really on fire. You know, I got this. And tomorrow it's like, oh, they, they didn't make it and this and that. And I'm like, mm. y'all ever do that? The next place I'm going, Jesus taught the simple people, and I'm a, I'm a simple man. They made a song out of me, Leonard Skinner. Anyway, <clears throat> simple man. I'm simple man. I'm country bumpkin Bob and proud of it because Jesus uses guys like me. I've been talking to my brothers at work, you know, and they said, well, when I get there, I said, you are there, brother, right now. God will use you right now where you are. Amen? If I wait till I'm good enough to get healed or delivered, why did I not have to wait to be saved? People think that, boy, when I get to that place, Maria, then God will heal me. You're in that place. The only thing that's changing you from the, uh, receiving your healing is your heart. The Word has got to get in here to where I am unmovable. It's truth. It's got to get past this and into the good ground. I'm giving you nuggets to where we're going, amen? Because it depends on my ground. It really does. It depends on my ground. This is so awesome. Jesus right here showed them that the forgiveness of sins and healing is one. When you have one, you can have the other. Amen? Why should I have to wait till I'm good enough? Then maybe God can use me. He took me at my worst place I ever was. When the filth of sin was wretched and stinking on me, Jesus reached down, picked me up, and said, You're mine, son. Come up. And He did it to every one of y'all. Amen? If I'd have waited until I was good enough, I still wouldn't be saved. I did it at my lowest moment because I knew I humbled myself and said, I can't do it without you. It's the same thing with deliverance. If you're battling something, just reach out, but give it all to Him. Not just parts of your mind. I don't believe it to a point, but nah, I can't go there because, because what? Because what? You know more than God? Truth is truth, and God's Word is truth. Amen? Amen. God says, let God be true, and all men a liar. <laughs> I say unto thee, arise, and take up thy bed. Now, here again, like I showed you last week, Jesus is requiring something of you. Hear me? Why didn't he just magically make the man arise? You know, why, why did he not? No, he told the man, your sins are forgiven, son. Now, get up. Act like it. Hear me? Take your healing! Do you hear me, church? I'm teaching in love. Everybody say, ready? I love. Brother Robert. Yeah, amen. All right. Okay. He said, take up thy bed and arise. Come up and grab your healing. Come up and grab your deliverance. See it? I see it. I see it. It's all for one and one for all with Jesus. Amen? I'm going to tear my shirt again. Here we go. I'm trying to get elastic stuff. I say unto thee, arise and take up thy bed and go thy way into thine house. And immediately he arose. He had a choice, ladies and gentlemen. He had a choice. He could lay there and said, I don't feel healed. I just, you know, I don't I didn't feel the power go into me this time. Hear me? There's no recording. It was when the power felt him and he felt like getting up. The guy says immediately. Immediately. He got up. Immediately he took that step of faith. I'll tell you one quick account. That's not my watch. I'll tell you one quick account. Brother Kenneth Hagen, senior, uh, he was born with a bad heart. And, and because of that bar, bad heart, obviously he didn't have energy or anything, and it got to 17. He'd been to several, I think seven different specialists in that time that told him, said, you know, there's nothing we can do. Your heart is just, you know, love to draw, buddy. I'm sorry. You was born with a defective heart. So he became better at 17 years old. Ain't that awful? 
It, it's awful, ain't it? A teenage boy, and he can hear the other kids playing outside. And the preachers came to the house, men of God that loved the Lord, that were not walking in truth, and told him, Son, don't worry. Jesus is going to take you home soon and everything will be okay in the sweet by and by when you get there. Kenneth didn't have nothing else to do because he's bedridden. His legs wouldn't work, so he propped the Bible up in front of him and he'd read the Word. Nothing better he could have done. I say nothing better he could have done. He took God's Word. And he got down there to Mark chapter 11 and it told him, whatsoever you pray, believe it and you shall have it. He says, God, I just want to be like the other kids and play. I want to live. And he said he read, read that maybe a thousand times. What else did he have to do? He's down. Nowhere to go. Over. And you know, for a while, it just stayed up here in his head. But you know what happened? It got down in a good heart. Our good soil. Excuse me. Good heart, good soil. They're both same. Amen. And it started clicking in him whatsoever. Whatsoever I ask for in prayer, I can have it. You mean I can be healed, Lord? Yes. Yes, Kenneth, you can. He got to believe in it so much, he threw the covers off of him, and his legs had atrophied so small, so skinny, so weak. He took his pajamas and he threw one leg off and threw the other one off. This is faith, amen. This is taking up your bed and walk. Now nothing in him, no surge of power, nothing, no great, you know, fuzzy feeling that tickled him. He said, You can walk now. No, nothing but true grit faith. Hear me? Gripped Kenneth. He said, if that's true, then this ain't true. Amen. I got an amen. I'm doing good, John. He slid up to the edge of bed and his feet hit like he said two sticks of firewood. Kapunk, kapunk. And he used the strength he had left in his arms. And he wallered like that and drug his legs. He got to the de or the counter or the excuse me. And he started going down on his dresser and this and that, you know, and he used it. And little by little. And you know what happened? He started pain in his legs. And most people say, Man, that's terrible. No, that's awesome. Because he hadn't felt nothing in months. That's right. And he knew the power of God is being displayed because I picked up my bed and I walked when he couldn't walk in the natural. Does anybody see this? The Word got in here where it counts. I can tell you all day. I believe. I believe. I can tell you. Jesus said, He didn't say He perceived they had faith. What He said, He said, He saw. Hear me, church? He saw their faith, and it mattered to Jesus. He saw their faith. I love this. The pain surged through his legs, and he had a choice again. Sit down. My legs are burning. They're on fire like needles, he said, going up his legs. Jesus told him he could walk through the Word. Not an apparition or a vision in the night through the Word. I can have whatever soever I ask in prayer. He went on to live to be in his 80s, preached to God all over, and went to sleep in Jesus. The Lord even told him when he was going to go. Amen. Never stumbled another again. Never another day. This is awesome. Amen. Jesus saw his faith. He picked up his bed and he walked. I love this because it got in here. If you have to read a scripture a thousand and one times, read it. It's worth it. Who cares? If it takes me six months to get out of the wheelchair, I'm getting out of the wheelchair. Amen. Who cares? Jesus saw their faith. But I'm telling you, there's all through His Word, these stories and little nuggets are there. They're there. Do your loved ones love you enough? We got a healing evangelist coming into this month. You got somebody sick? Can't get them there? Drag them. Drag them. Go get some buddies and drag them, but drag them. Amen? Because God's watching your faith. He's not moved by the squalling and the bawling and the unbelief. He's moved by faith. Amen? Thank you. 
We're going to look at another thing. This is the teaching. I got where I wanted to, didn't I? Yeah, immediately. And they glorified God, saying, We never saw it in this fashion. And he went forth again by the seaside, and all the multitude resorted to him, and he taught them. Jesus is still teaching us today. And I thank God for that, because I want to be taught of my God. If you would, just turn just a page over to Mark chapter 4. And here he is again, our Jesus. Verse 1. Mark 4. And he began again to teach by the seaside. And there was gathered unto him a great multitude. Ain't this awesome? So that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea, and the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. And he taught them many things by parables and said unto them in his doctrine, Listen, hearken, behold! There went out a sower to sow. And it came to pass as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. And some fell on stony ground where it had not much earth. And immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and then because it had no root, it withered away. Some, and some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. And other fell on good ground, and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased, and brought, some, brought forth some thirty, some sixty, and some a hundred. And he said unto them, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. You got ears in here? You got your spiritual ears on, church? Yes. And when he was alone, they that were about him with the twelve asked of him the parable. And he said unto them, Unto you, listen, this is Jesus speaking to you, church. Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. You're to know these things, church. Amen. You're to know how to receive from God. God is not hiding these things from me. For years now I have searched for the hidden things of God. They're not hidden. That's right. I'm a born again believer. They're right there in front of me. Amen. Man. Man. I praise God for that. There is not one of you in here that ain't planting something in the ground. You ladies can plant flowers. You men have grown gardens. You know what Jesus is saying here. You do. Now let your spiritual ears hear this. That seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted. Big word. Converted. Changed. Changed, church. And their sins should be forgiven them. You know what that also means? They can be healed. I showed you that, amen? Just, just Not just my sins. There's so much more with God. So much more. And he said unto them, listen, listen to the words of Jesus. Know you not this parable? And how then will you know all parables? The sower soweth the word. And these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. Listen, church. But when they have heard, who comes? Satan cometh when? Immediately. Satan comes immediately. Why? Listen to me. Listen to me. You're hearing the word right now, right? There's, there's word going into a ground in you right now. Now it determines what this seed word is going to do in you right here. Amen. I'm telling you the truth, church. Listen. Amen. Satan is not going to wait on down the road somewhere. Right. right now. He's coming right now. He's telling you don't, don't trust this. You know you can't trust this. Do you hear him? Yes. He's a liar and the father of lies. Yes. Immediately he came. Why? Because he knows if I let this thing get good ground, if they receive it in their hearts, somebody will get up right now. Right now. Why do we always got to wait for our miracle? That is ridiculous. That's right. I got my miracle now. Amen. Right now. You know why? Because that's going in good ground. I'll take nothing else but. That's how you got to get. I've told you before, you got to get down and dirty. Submit to God in what? Resist the devil. What? Resist. 
I, it amazes me. It absolutely amazes me. If a thief on your house to hurt one of these babies, every single one of you would die to try to protect your children. Right? It's amazing then how Satan can come and take your health and take your finances and tell you you've got to do this and you've got to do that and we just sit here, oh God, help. That's not resisting. Amen. Somebody goes rapping on the door, put a chair behind it. They bust through that, get a weapon. I say, get a weapon. Amen? Amen. Jesus, Paul taught, you put on the full armor because you're in war, ladies and gentlemen. You want your healing? Take it. Amen. I say, you want your healing? Take it! Amen. Take it in the name of Jesus. You've been given authority. Amen? Amen. Where's your seed at? Where is the word? Is it still in your mind bumping around like a ball game? Ta -ta 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 -ta. Or has it got down here in the good ground where fruit is produced? This is the key. I see it so plain in God's Word. Amen. It's the key. Where do you put His Word? What's the first thing you go to when trouble comes? The phone or the Word of God? Right. I'm not trying to be cruel, but we got the truth. Amen? Where do you go when you feel sick? Where's the first thing you call to? Where's your heart? Where's it at? This, this will tell you where the... The good your, where your ground is. Amen? Everybody say once again before I lose everybody, I love <laughs> Brother Robert. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Just making sure. This is in love. Amen? Albert says, don't get mad at him. I'm not mad. I'm excited. I'm excited. Christians should be the happiest people. I should not be able to contain you. You should be like animals. Man, there's freedom in this. The cage door is open. Do you see it? It's open, ain't it, Tom? It's open, brother. I see this. Take up your mat. The Word. Where's your Word sown? I should not be able to contain you. I wouldn't care if you throw chairs and we had to put a cage up here because you're so happy. You know what I'm saying? We go to a football game and have you ever gone to football games? I'm not a big sport, but I've seen people act like idiots. Great big number ones and all this stuff. That's how you should be toward Jesus. Man, we should be praising Him. It's awesome. I think I set an alarm outside on a car. I'm like, <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. He can't take what you won't give him. He can't. He don't have that power over believers. Amen. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who, when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness. And you ever see how people, when they get saved, it's so awesome, ain't it? Don't you love to see people come to Jesus? And man, for a while, they're like, oh man, this is awesome. This is awesome. I've never been so happy. I've never felt so good, Maria, in my life. And you know what? They can't help but They can't get help but share it. They can't. You get around them, you know, and the, the other day they were cussing and this and that. And they're like, man, you, ever, you know Jesus? What? You know Jesus? I got saved this, this weekend, man, at church. I've I never felt so good in my life. Man, that's awesome. It is awesome. It's awesome. Amen. Then you see him six months. <laughs> blank, blank, blankety blank job. What happened? What happened? Where's that joy? Can y'all remember the day you got saved? Was it awesome? Did you know you're still saved? Where's your joy? The Holy Spirit dwells in you. And His fruit is joy. Amen? He's the King of what? Peace. He's the King of peace. It's yours today. If you're working out of good ground, it really is. And immediately they receive it with gladness. Look at verse 17. And have no root in themselves. And so endure, but for a time. And afterward, when affliction, hear me, church, or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. What happened? What happened? Over by my house, <clears throat> there's 
big farm fields. <laughs> and I would think a farmer would be a pure-grained idiot that if he just went out there, throwed seed on the ground, never no fertilized, never did anything for the weeds, never tilled the ground, never tend to it all, and expected to bear anything. Wouldn't y'all? I mean, I would. Wouldn't you? You get you a nice Mother's Day flower, flower, go out here and plant it in asphalt. <laughs> never water it. Do you expect it to be productive? Do you? Of course you don't. What are we doing? Are you tending to your ground? See it? I see it. Y'all see it? Amen. Well, if you do, then it means I can teach. <laughs> and if you don't, I'm wasting words. But I'm getting it. Okay, I'm getting it. And I want you to get it. And if you ain't getting it, pray for me so that you will get it, okay? Because I see it right there. We got to tend to our ground. I got to tend to my heart. I got to tend to that word that's put in. I do. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word. This is the one where, this is just my opinion. Don't stone me that the majority of Christians are today. And I believe this because of the times we're in. Okay? Listen to this. These are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world. Hear me, church? And the deceitfulness of riches. Hear me, church? And the lust of other things. Entering in, it chokes the word, and it becometh unfruitful. If there ever was a time that it is hard to get your word in good ground, I admit it's now. And I'll tell you why. You know when the church is over historically, and this is truth, when it really grew and went to multitudes and capacity, honestly, you know when it did it? Under persecution. Amen. When they had nowhere else to go but to Him. Right. Why do the people in Africa and these other places receive so well? Because there's nowhere else to go, church. Right. You have options. Come on. You do. You know why? Because God's blessed this nation. He has. And that, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm, I thank God I live in America. I don't, wanna, I don't want you to have to drag me 20 miles to get me to a healing evangelist. I don't. Do you? But it's hurt us in receiving the Word. Because I have options. It's obvious. This church should be full. Because whether you believe it or not, you have got to have Jesus. There is a time coming where man will not be able to save you. Hear me, church? Where his opinion, his wisdom, and his great knowledge cannot get it done for you. There is that day's coming. When no natural means will get you your victory. When you reach that place, if, if the Word is sown in good ground, that's your day of a miracle. Because when there's nowhere else to go, you can always come to Jesus. Amen? Amen? Listen to me. The Word is more than capable. More than capable. It is all empowered. Hear me? God sent His Word and He healed them. And He delivered them from all their destructions. That's the Word of God. Amen? But if you don't put it in here where it's productive, it will not bear fruit in your life. <laughs> the deceitfulness of riches. Man, to me it was so easy to be all about things. Remember when you're young and you feel good? If I had that motorcycle, I get that horse I've always wanted. Man, if I just get that horse, Linda. Woo! Remember them? The deceitfulness of riches. I didn't think I needed the word back then. I felt good. Everything was going good. Married. The old lady was hot. I had everything I wanted. She's still hot. Okay, I got that in. Happy Mother's Day. You know what I'm saying? Remember them days all right, church? Right? But this comes... <laughs> then comes the time... I'm in the good graces now. Then comes the time, though, when things ain't going just right. 
I shouldn't have to go in detail, but Dum Dum got in trouble, okay? Because he did it his way. And then you go to the things, you know, that you're commonly going through. You know, you try the doctor, you try the bank, you try, you know, your buddies to, you know, pat you on the back. Man, you'll make it broke. You know, I tried all that. I still didn't get where I needed to go. So then I tried Jesus. And he never leaves you or forsakes you. You can hear, and, and please don't take this wrong. There's... It doesn't matter, good speaker, bad speaker, charismatic, not charismatic. It's the Word that matters, amen? And if this is all about God, if I was the greatest speaker ever, it wouldn't have any more power into it than if I just read it out of the book, shut the Bible, and walked out of here. It's how you perceive it in your heart. What will you do with the Word? Will you pick up your mat? Will you cast down the deceitfulness of this lying world and say your word is truth I refuse to take anything else as truth but this that's where your victory is amen did I get to the end if I didn't I got real close didn't I church and it becometh unfruitful and listen to this and these are they which are sown on good ground such as listen hear the word and receive it this is all about receiving from God. Amen, church? Amen. And receive it and bring forth fruit. Some 30, some 60, and some 100. It's up to you. I tell you, it's up to you. The Word is never changing. It's unmovable. It is established covenant that nobody, nobody can break. Amen? That's what's so awesome about this Word. They can tell you out there that that ended, this ended, that is a lie. Amen. This word is eternal, for it is the word of the living God. Amen. Amen. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen, church. Amen. I'm going to sow this word in some good ground. I want the fruit. I've already had the fruit. Man, everybody seen my family? I got an awesome family. I got brothers and sisters. Look at them all lined out here. It's awesome. Amen. You're all my brothers and sisters, and I'm yours. You lucky dogs. <laughs> We're going to go in good ground, amen? God bless y'all.